it's 3 a.m. and my muscles are so sore. I'm just thinking I might have to take an ibuprofen. It's my calves, the back of my knees. For some reason, yesterday's walk was under 20k. It may have been about 19 and yet it was so long and so hard. Several hills. Um, yeah, the path to Vienna, a really pretty city, was not easy. I've been sort of conflicted a little bit about whether or not I should stay in Logroño tomorrow. Um, it's only 10k to Logroño. Um, I know that Joe and Emma are thinking of going a bit further than that, but I've always had Logroño on my sort of pinned map so that I can try all the tapas. But if I don't go with them to Navarrete, which is the next stage, then I might end up not seeing them again on this trip. And um, yeah, but I really do want to go to Logroño, so we'll have to weigh that up. Anyway, I'm going to try and get some more sleep. Hey guys, I stayed in an apartment with Joe and Emma last night, so I thought you might want an, um, a an apartment the door. Tour. This is the living room of the apartment. That's the kitchen. Ouch, my feet hurt. This is the laundry. <laughs> Emma slept here. Jo slept tea and she said she didn't have a very good night's sleep, poor thing. This is the bathroom. And I got very lucky they gave me this room. So that's a, such a gorgeous gesture by the two girls. Yeah, so that's the apartment. And we, we cooked and had a, a really good time. I'm about to leave, actually. The girls have left already. They're going to Navarrete. I'm about to check out of this apartment, but my whole body hurts. But I have to go, gotta keep moving. Wouldn't it be nice to have a sleep in today? Like a, not a sleep in, but a sleep all day. Oh well, let's get going, Lagroño. Woo, Tapper Street. Let's go, Em. My body hurts. Okay, this is the outfit of the day. <laughs> I am so stuffed and wrecked, but got to push on. See you on the trail. Bye. Good morning, everybody. It is the 6th of September, 13 degrees, and a little bit chilly. Dogs barking everywhere just left our apartment we're in vienna um it is going to be top of 22 degrees today and um, i'm only doing a 10k day so at the moment it's about 9 45 a.m I was going to go straight to Lagrogno, but I wanted to go back to uh, Vienna city centre so I can get a stamp from this lovely city. I don't know where to get a stamp from. Last night we stayed at an Airbnb and there was no stamp. Went to the supermarket, probably no stamps. I'm going to try and see whether I can find a coffee shop so I can get a stamp. It's actually very charming. Oh, what a beautiful morning. <laughs> That's the sound of Jack Hammer. Yes. <laughs> hey, oh, gracias. No.
I am the only one here in this beautiful cathedral. I love cathedrals. They are a magnificent work of architecture and art. And I know they are places of religion, but it's not a place where there are negativity. If you just want to come and visit and pay your respects to those before you. I don't want to say too much about religion because I know that's very controversial. But I just love the fact that these places have been here for centuries, years, and they still stand despite limited technology, you know? Oh, here's the organ. This one's for you, Daniel. I know you play the organ. All right? <laughs> It's so ornate, everything's gold. And I mean, the artistry of this whole, whole place is incredible. It must cost something to maintain every year. What I love are the kind of the whale bones of the ceilings. Santa Maria di Viana. Santa Maria de Viana, de la Asunción. Santa Maria de la Asunción. Mm. Oh, very good. Eh? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Salud. Hello. <laughs> Gracias. Estamos hoy ya. Uh, oh. Siete. Mm. No, seis, seis. Seis, seis. Seis, que no veo. Mm. Seis. Del ocho, yo, septiembre del nueve. Septiembre. Nueve. Dos mil veinticuatro. Gracias. Ciao. A ti, gracias. 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 That's a beautiful stamp. I love it. Thank you very much, Santa Maria Cathedral. There are also many shops to help you with your Camino. And I think they are kind of a little bit cheaper than those items at San Jean. This one's for you, Nat. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. Let's have a croissant. Oh, I don't even know if they call croissant. Gosh, I better freshen up on my Spanish. Freshen up, what a joke. I mean, just learn a few more words I think would be helpful. Like, you know, aside from coffee, cafe con leche. Mm. Going back into this beautiful place. Excuse me. See you later. 
You are beautiful. The beautiful lady at the um, Cathedral Ava Maria asked why I didn't bring an umbrella with me. She's so gorgeous. I know I say the word beautiful a lot, but that seems to be the word that comes to mind whenever I see something lovely. Anyway, she was lovely. She was so, she was like my grandma, you know? So, but I don't have an umbrella. I do have, of course, a rain jacket, but, um, and I might put it on because it's a bit cold. Unfortunately, I'm feeling a little bit like wanting to go for a pin. Farewell, Viana. You see, if I didn't look back, I wouldn't have seen this beautiful view of San Pedro. I love that building. If I was an eagle, I would fly through that hole every day. I think I'm going to enjoy this two and a half hour walk to La Grande Hill. Woo woo woo! I'm feeling better now. Need to pee though. <laughs> no English? <laughs> what is your favourite food on the Camino? To eat? Yeah. Food? Um, I didn't. You don't know? <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay. See you, Buon Camino. Uh, Douglas. This is Douglas from Pennsylvania, USA. Douglas, how's the Camino going? Oh, uh, for an old guy, pretty well. <laughs> You're not old, come on. Well, it depends on what old is for you. But for me, <laughs> 68 years old is old. So oh. I thought I would do the Camino before I got too old. Oh, you know what? I'm with you regarding mobility. I thought to myself, you know, let's just knock 800 in one shot, 800 Ks and see how it goes. Um, what, um, what kind of food have you enjoyed eating in Spain so far on this trip? On the Camino. Um, let's see. So I I don't know if I found it yet because I got spoiled and I was four days in France. So um, I I haven't sort of gotten into the Spanish groove yet. No problem. <laughs> so I'm hoping the Grano does that tonight with the pinchos. Yes. Now it's not called it's not called tapas. Is it? It's called pinchos, right? You know, up here it's it's uh, it's it depends. Like I think if you're in Basque country, it's definitely a pincho. Oh, okay. And if you're outside of Basque country, it's a tapa. Okay. Oh my goodness, it's flooded. And then some tapas, you know, are free with your drink. Yeah. In other places, you gotta pay. Right. Okay. Let's navigate this. Whoa! No, it's not too bad. Yeah. Three words to describe the Camino. What would they be? Uh, the Camino will provide. Okay. Is that three words? <laughs> Camino will provide. Okay, I love it. Okay, thank you so much for the interview. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, one more thing. Yeah. Um, if you were to give a tip You're to... like Colombo. <laughs> oh, oh. 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 One, one last thing as you're well... walking out the door. <laughs> and you have to be very worried about that one last thing. <laughs> um, it's always the question that, you know, that is the most you. important one. Yeah, yeah correct. It's it like gives, when you, it gives you a way. Like, that's right. It's when you push the elevator button trying to go and you ask that key question. I did media training for CEOs and I always tell them, never answer a question when you're like, you know, being ushered to the door, you know. Um, so anyway, this is that question. What tips would you give to people who would like to do the Camino. Don't over plan. What else? Um, so why not over plan, Douglas? Well, because what you plan for probably won't happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you just, everything you need is in your pack and just go for it. Right. Don't look at the weather because if it rains, you just pull out your rain jacket. I like that. And just walk into a restaurant because it looks good, not because it has a good rating on Google. Oh, hey, that's really good. Douglas, you've thought this just through. Be organic. What? Organic. Be organic. Not, not cyber smart. Oh. Be, you know, Present. Be body smart. Yeah. Gee, that's wise. Yeah. Douglas, you are a real treasure. Thank you so much. <laughs>
What are, uh, you, are you doing a video? I am you... sort of. I'm trying to. I'm not very good at it. I don't have a windshield on the microphone, so it's probably very annoying for my viewers. Just trying to do a travel log, you know, and because I don't have a diary. So this is my video is my medium. And um, you said your job is a trainer. Well, that CEO, of... if, if that, so they're, his or her company, that CEO's company, hired me to help with media training. And your question is, if there is something that needs to be hidden, how do you train them to, to basically get through the interview without their stock plummeting? Well, there's a term called blocking and bridging. And that, what that means is if a journalist asks you a question about, you know, how is your, say, logistic chain impacting labour that is um, sustainable, blah, 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 blah. Well, then you say, well, you know, we're enjoying great growth and we are expanding in more countries, providing more jobs for those that really need it. <laughs> you see what I'm doing there? It's like a, you address the question, but then you bridge it to what you really want to say. And I'm actually rather good at providing them pointers on how to do that. You don't want... Blocking the, and bridging. It's called blocking and bridging. You don't want the journalist to say, hey, but CEO, you have not answered my question. You want them to like hear what you're trying to say, but then you have been guided delfly, hopefully, by that CEO onto a topic that he really wants to talk about. Um, yes, thanks for the question about logistics. What I would like to tell you is that we are now expanding in five countries, providing jobs for those who need it most. Pope. Yeah, I'm the Pope, okay. And it's the year, let's say, 1750. 1750 and I'm the Pope, okay. Okay. Yes. And I'm a journalist. Okay. You know, one of the first, let's say. One of the first so journalists. So an apostle then? Yeah. <laughs> an and apostle. I'm not a journalist that I'm saying to the Pope, you know, hey, Pope, I'm really happy that you agreed to this interview. Okay. We have this new thing called a newspaper, and we would like to put an article in about the growth of the Catholic Church throughout Europe. Uh-huh. And what I'd like to ask you is the gold that we see in these churches, um, where did it come from? The gold, G O L D. Okay, I'll, so I'm the Pope, right? Yeah. I say, bless you, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, it's a, probably nice a son. Nice inclusive language. Very good. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, the church is the shepherd, and we would like the congregation to know that we will provide for all. The gold has been provided by those who would like to seek redemption. Instead of putting into the vault, we have decided to put the gold in the place of worship. Um, we would like our congregation to have a safe place to come and listen and be closer to the Lord. So the gold that you're seeing now is the toil of the community being put back into the infrastructure that allows them to seek a holier future. That there is no gold in Europe. So I asked the question in a different way, Senor Papa. Uh-huh. Yes, my son. Is, where exactly did the physical gold, I understand the concept of what you're doing with the wealth of this gold, mm -hmm. but where did this physical gold come from and how did it arrive in Europe? Oh my goodness, well gold is a currency to purchase things and it's arrived in Europe because people have bought it here. I'm not a geologist, my son. Gold uh, comes from the ground. <laughs> well, I, I just happened to have been to the port um, of Spain and there were boats coming in from Latin America oh. and they're full of gold. Yes. And I said to a captain, I said, where does this gold come from and where is it going? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, the gold is from Paraguay Oh. Um, and we purchase it there on behalf of the Catholic Church. Oh. And we're transporting it to go into this cathedral in yes. Yes. Lagronio. Yes. And uh, and I said, well, how did the gold arrive to the port? And they said... By ship? Well, no, the port in... How did it arrive to 
being loaded on my boat oh. in Paraguay. And they said, well, we have, you know, military there mm -hmm. that um, extracts it from the villages. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you accusing the Catholic Church of, of um, <laughs> acquiring certain items through force here? Well, you know what? I have to... Are you a Catholic, by the way? Yeah. Catholic? Yes. Well, so am I. So, so I think... So, so it's like... It's like... So, you know, you go into the church and you see this gold. Yes. And you say, oh my God, you know, they took it from Latin America mm -hmm. um, on the backs of the poor who had to mine it. And but, then they... Mm -hmm had it built by the poor yes. who had to risk their life building this cathedral. Uh, you would hope that the poor got some food for their gold and their toil and labor, no? You would oh, hope. Their sins were forgiven. <laughs> yes, for the, you know, that they, they are contributing to the greater goods. But, um, <laughs> but here's one thing here. That because of the blood, sweat and tears of the poor who dug up those gold so that they can have food on their table and feed their family, they have helped the Catholic Church in building infrastructure for generations to come. So, you know. Well, I have, I have reports that this um, blood, sweat and tears that yes. the people have to shed to extract gold is rather oppressive and that people are actually um, die in the process of extracting gold and they are actually separated from their families and works as slaves in these mines. Well, my son, I would <laughs> beg for you to find out the source of your information. What numbers can you show me to showcase that we are actually well, I've taking back from in the poor? <laughs> I, 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 I am coming from the future. So we now know this through historical records. So you're not to be blamed. This is the culture. This is the, the sentiment of the times, Pope. We understand that oh. you think that these people are inferior and that you think that, you know, you say they're equal, but you treat them inferior. But we know that in 200 years, it'll get better. <laughs> but right now, I just came back to find out, you know, more about it. Oh, Ask Douglas okay. if he has read the book, Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, and he said... Yes, I have. Okay. You know, and I understand it's one of the top 100 books. To read? Uh, written um, in British history. Yeah, so, I love and it. He and was, he was actually knighted by the Queen, <gasps> Ken Follett. I, he, was for, he really? For his books, because oh. they're, they're deemed very historically accurate. Yes, I, I love that book, Pillars of the Earth. I only, I only read that one, Ken Follett. But I can tell you that that book has given me so much joy whenever I walk into a cathedral because he talks about the cathedral building in ancient times and he, uh, he compares it to um, the space race who can build the highest cathedral the best the strongest in medieval times and so therefore every time I go in so I went to Barcelona and went into the Sagra Familia and I nearly cried it was so beautiful but it was just, you could really feel something in there, you know? Even that's if, a good example of a modern day cathedral. You don't really hear of modern day cathedrals being built. You know, yep. Everything we go into is hundreds of years old. Yep. So, and that, I agree, that is a fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a really great analogy. And so I loved it and I always use it. But it gives me a greater appreciation that those masons or masonry of the time and how do they build those lofty curved well bones um, church buildings without any kind of today's cranes and technology I mean you've really got to hats off to the masons of the time you know do you, rem do you remember in the book that it all started with the, the masons that, that knew math yes so the engineers they had to know math to be able to, to go to that size they had to know maths. They had to know math. And most yeah. most people couldn't even count at the time. Yeah. So, so math was not even a concept that was even known. So only very few people, like the top engineers, knew math then, yes? Yes. So you had to know math to be able to build. Yeah, it was incredible. 
it's incredible, really. You think about it, and they and those cathedrals are still standing today. Can I ask you, can I ask you, Douglas? Do you think it is um, good to ask people if why they walk in the Camino? I mean, um, it's, a, it's a genuine question because I haven't dared ask anybody there because I thought, oh, people might get a little bit grumpy. But I seriously don't know why I'm walking. <laughs> Well, I think most people like that question. They like to be asked that question. Okay. And and uh, anytime I've asked it, people have been very open about it. Oh, that's good. Even just walking a minute with somebody, you can ask them that. Yeah, right. It, it seems to be the fast connection that are made. Right. You can talk. Okay. Because in reality, we're all doing this for some conscious or unconscious reason. Sometimes even asking the question to somebody that doesn't know helps them formulate. Uh, yeah. Start asking the question. Right. And then like Rilke says to the young fellow, live in the question. Oh. Don't don't seek answers. I love that. So Yeah, I love that. So most of the time it's asking the right question. Well, I I'm, I'm doing a vox pop. Every time I see a pilgrim I like, I just say, hey. What's your experience been like? What are the tips you would give to future pilgrims? Three words to describe the Camino. That's it. And I thought, oh, I would love to know why, but I thought, oh, maybe that's too personal. So for the first five days of this trip, I haven't asked. You're the first person that I've said, well, actually, you're the second man, the second pilgrim to ask me why I'm walking. <laughs> and I haven't asked anyone yet why they're walking. And I'm thinking, is that too personal? I'm not sure. But anyway, well, I, I'm I would, glad. I would include that in your interview. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Um, I'm going to from now on. And if somebody doesn't want to answer it, they will. They yeah. will not answer it. But, yeah. But, you know, I think the majority of people are doing it because they're in a life transition. Yes. Um, that's number one reason. Yeah. They've gone through it before, so they're getting ready for um, retirement, or they are in between jobs. They're in some liminal space. Mm. And then there's other people. They did it once. And they have loved it so much they're just doing it again. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've met someone who's done it three times, like the same route, you know. And I've met a guy who did it three times. Yeah. But he, it took him two times to get over his first wife. Oh, wow. Yeah. How does he know when she, that he's over his wife? He didn't know he was over until he did the second time. But how? But what was the evidence? What's the proof point? I, uh, My child? Good, that would be a good question for him. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess if you know, you know. So what's your motive? Well, my motive is really to get some clarity. I have, um, I was divorced eight years ago. I believe that I am over it. I'm, I am here because my, both of my children have reached legal adulthood. My daughter turned 18 in June last and my son is now 20. And um, I'm thinking about what's next for me, you know. I, I don't know what I want to do with my career. Um, you know, I've don't know and I've got a couple of ambition like I would love to write a book but I can't seem to squeeze it out <laughs> and I kind of wanted to make a film but I, I don't know I was going to do law but then it's another three years and I'm just too old and Are you still in the same job? Oh, I've been doing communications for the past 25 years and... You're still, you're, you're still working in a job, you're not in yeah, well, a job. Well, I am in between job. I've just left um, my job, but don't worry, I will get another one. I don't ever have any problems getting a job, but um, gone are the days where you work 20 years for a company, you know, Douglas? Uh, in Australia, if you work for the government, it's very insecure work because they only give you like 12 month contracts because of COVID. They don't want to tie in big contracts with people. I'm okay with that. It means that I just have to be adaptable. But um, it allows me to take six weeks off, you see, so I can go back and get another contract. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going. I'm going to still work. Um, what I wouldn't mind doing is to be consulting, putting my 25 years of experience, coaching executives, providing PR and media advice formally, not what we just did. Um, but. I just can't be bothered. I, I kind of, well, that's, that's a really bad message, but I just want to um, enjoy life because I think people retire and then they die, you know? Yeah. Trying this so, morning. You know Hispanic? Not really. Yeah, that's the plot. The plot is muddy. Oh, Lodoso. Oh, it's very muddy today, isn't it? That's disgusting. 
and it's actually really it makes your feet heavy because oh gosh I hope my shoes is holding up. Yeah it's sticky. Like it. You don't want to slip either. Whew. Let's go into the grass. Oh my goodness. Have you been staying in albergues? Yeah I, I do albergues. Lagronio 5k, love it. No, you need to go to the toilet. So I'm just going to skip down this path behind a mound to hide myself from the pilgrims. But also, the problem is that there's a highway on the other side. So, see? But what would you prefer? I don't think the cars are going to be slowing down to see my white butt. Ooh! love toilet paper here so I'm not the only one that thinks that this is the only time that I wish I was a male <laughs> Okay, it's very noisy walking next to this highway, but at least there are a couple of trees and then you've got the highway, but it might be a bit too noisy to film. I'm actually really sore this morning. My body's aching. Um, I don't know what happened because I had a, a reasonable night's sleep. Unfortunately, I do snore. <laughs> and so I think that's why the girls gave me a, my own room. Um, and I'm so sorry if I kept you awake, but... I just can't help it, I swear. Um, my calves are hurting this morning. I'm hobbling a little bit. And um, I don't know, I think I'm feeling just tired. Tired, tired, tired. Maybe because I haven't had enough water, I don't know. But <sighs> day eight, day eight. Those things, I'm not sure. I am sick of pilgrims. <laughs> There's just too many on the trail today. Too many. You know, there is something to be said about wearing headphones when you're walking next to a highway. It is so annoying, the traffic. So, while I was saying to another pilgrim, oh, no, no, you got to be present. You don't put earphones on. If there's a highway, I think in my future, which I think there will be plenty, I think I'm going to be putting on some headphones and maybe listening to a podcast, especially if there's nothing changing in the environment. And if I'm feeling the way I feel right now, which is a little bit antisocial, kind of a bit peopled out, you know. There's so many pilgrims on the path today. I'm one of them, I know, but it's just hard work. I have no more energy. Oh, Roja country. This is wine country. Yoo-hoo! La Grogno. Is this important? I'm not sure. There's still a six in front of it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I think by the next town, I should have a five in front of the miles to go or the Ks to go. Winding road, dun dun. 
No one's around. Woohoo! We're about to approach some concrete, so I'm gonna put on these stoppers onto this so that it doesn't make such a noise going into town. La Grogno, home of tappers. Apparently, if you are in Basque country, tappers is known as pinchos, whereas now that you're out of Basque country, it is now back known as tappers. So, tappers it is, and I'm gonna go to Tapper Street. I might be there for a while. Don't wait up for me. <laughs> Looking forward to eating, although I do have a bag of vegetables from last night's dinner in my bag. I'm not too sure if I will be eating too much of that. Maybe I'll save it for tomorrow. It's a big day tomorrow with lots and lots of K's to do. But tonight we're doing a food tour. There are heaps of advertising coming into Magronio about albergues and restaurants and points of interest coming into Magronio now. What a gorgeous little house. The sun's come out. Just saw Margaret. <laughs> We're gonna bump into people. Hola. Hola, buena. Hello, <laughs> mate. In Vienna. Yeah. Please, Margaret. I've met her again. Hello. And I'm sorry, did you catch your name? Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Oh, I will see you. I've got a pension. Oh, pension. Yes. Nice. I'll see you soon. What a cute house. Look at that. This one's for you, mum and dad. My little green thumbs at home. Isn't that gorgeous? How do they fix it on, you know, on this gate? Okay. Here's how. Wire. I love it. Beautiful. Such a cute house. I'm not too sure. I'm sorry, I'm just poking two people's houses. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Hello. Hola. Here's the only Spanish I kind of really know except for Por Favor and Cafe Con Leche. Buenos dias, como estas? Oh, muy bien, gracias, y como te va? <laughs> First sign of Burgos, my goodness, you know that means that Burgos is going to be the beginning or the end before the meseta. I'm trying to clean up some of the mud from the walk. the road again baby I think we're gonna come up to a puenta soon one of my favorite words it's puenta bridge oh. hey they have a chocolate river too like Melbourne smells really good. Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is me tonight. It's my bed for tonight, right in front of the WC. <laughs> I 
And this is the outdoors. Not bad. Hello. Hello. So this is how pilgrims are washing their clothes. And then they hang it. Yes. There's no stoppers. I don't understand it. <laughs> This is what the um, Pilgrim's Office gave me. It's a map and also the elevation, but I guess that's gone. Oh, it's so pretty, Lagonio. I'm so glad that I've decided to stay here and see the Tapas Street. It is so, so lovely. Lots to do. As soon as I came over, oh, that's like a Lego purse. I know, oh, isn't that's that cool. cool. That is so yeah, cool. Yeah, when I came over the bridge, instead of taking a hard right or a half right, I kind of went straight. Yeah. Way I love this town. They're so yeah. good. Pamplona and then. Uh, oh my gosh, I wouldn't mind buying something Lagonio. from there. I don't want to eat. No, just the perfect place. Yeah. Look at that beautiful colors. They, I tell you, the Europeans curate fruit so well. Look yeah. at the colors. You can't make that up. This is my thumb. Like, that is as big as my hand. Just the way they've curated fruit is so good. This place has got butcher after butcher. Is this um, considered um, Tapper Street? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Tapper Street. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay. Oh, there's plenty of tables. Yeah, that's the good news. Oh, my God. I'm loving Tapper Street. Look at all that. <laughs>
and, uh, and calamari. Sardinia. <laughs> I can't believe it. Mmm, yummy. That is delicious. French. It's <laughs> uh, pork. Is it beef ribs? Yes. Okay. Oh my god. Poop. Poop. Like Poop. Pork. Yeah. So good. With onion. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so good. I love tapas. Uh, I'll have to look. Okay, I'm gonna now try the calamari. Look at the calamari tapas. Mm. <laughs> A little messy eating. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to Gunther for introducing me to tapas. He's the best. He's an experienced tapas eater. And he's doing a wine tour tomorrow and staying the weekend with all of us pilgrims are going on. He's going to do a wine tour on his own. Yeah? Oh my god. I'm moving to Spain just for the tapas. <laughs> Third tapas. Mm. Good? <laughs> you know. It's so good. Stuff, With all the uh, truffles in it. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. I moved this yeah, way. So they bastardized it. <laughs> oh no, but it's also the, the texture of the bread as well, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, it's totally oh, it's... Um, white wine. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, Rioja, yes. You're welcome. Yeah, gracias. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. wait. The issue is that I've seen a lot of red wine in Spain and I have not had a glass of white wine so hence I ordered a glass of white and they deliberated as to which one they're going to give me and they gave me, a, a, anyway I've already shown you what brand it is but yeah, beautiful colour lovely fresh on the nose now let's see the palette What's the name of that drink again? Oh my god it's so good. Oh, they've well, warmed the good this news up. Is, I do not have to drive. True, you can just walk home. No, they. Oh my god, he's got truffles. Oh. But I still like the sardines better. Mm. Yeah, you really got me on that. Oh my god. I rate, I reckon we'll go I reckon we went to a really good place, don't you? Huh? That was good. You can move into a what? I think it was mushroom stacked on top of a bread. So are you going to move to uh, Spain? Oh. Yeah. You do not see that that often. But yes, I went into a shop where they had four of them lined up and you can get different kinds of <gasps> Are they real? Oh yeah, they are. so much. They're delicious <laughs> and small and, and you can have 10 different types all at once. Yeah! It's the lemon one I think. Yeah? Oh my! De La Seva! Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you a uh, <laughs> bit of a broader story. Mm -hmm. So, oh God. 
full of ideas for you. Okay, I'm gonna go do, do a twirl. I don't see any hills, I just see steep steeples. That's yours, get your name on it. Let's get your name on it. Just come back from Lagonio Tapestry. Um, well, a couple of hours ago now, I'm just having a rest, but now I'm going to go and see if I can get into a pilgrim's mass. There is a big difference between 3.30 and 6.30. <laughs> Siesta's finished. There is a pilgrim mass at 8 o'clock. I thought it was at 7.30, but it gives me the chance to go and look at this beautiful cathedral.
me see your face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mushroom stick is so good. I'm gonna have another one. I'm lining up for a cake called Tata de Queso Traditional. Apparently, it's really good. about overindulgence I'm gonna to have to really walk 20 k's tomorrow <laughs> mm. I can't eat any more of this oh hola everyone it is night time about 10 p.m. in Logroño it has been an amazing day I've woken up in Vienna which is a beautiful city saying goodbye to of course Emma and Joe and then actually getting the chance to dry my hair because we stayed in an apartment um, then walked about 10 kilometers lovely uh, trail a little bit noisy with the highway and then we um, entered Logroño where um, I had a round of tapas with Gunther another pilgrim and then had a nap I did my laundry and then um, just now went for another round of tapas 
because when I was doing the laundry, this, there was a siesta, so it was kind of a nice lull. Anyway, I've had a few things to drink, <laughs> eaten a lot, and now I feel like an absolute glutton, uh, and it's time to go back to the elbow gay for a sleep tomorrow. Navrete. Um, I haven't booked anything. I'm just going to walk in to see whether or not I can get a, a bed. If not, then I'll just keep walking, I guess. Anyways, it's good night from Logonio. What a fantastic city it is.